Hello, hello, hello. This is Dr. Stephanie D. Barnes, CEO of C-Suite Women's Network, where I help women and a few good men to be the CEOs of their lives so they can be better CEOs of their businesses. And today I am continuing this series, Communicating Like a CEO, How to Engage and Not Enrage Your Team. Because in part one, we talked about how important it is to be aware of how we're speaking to our team. In part two, we focus on the importance of actually communicating and not communicating in silence with non-responses. And today, I want to talk about the importance of being an active listener. Because it is very important to you, if you want your team to listen to you, for you to listen to them. So it's really important to practice active listening. Because, you know, as CEOs, we got 50 million things on our minds. We've got something that we've got to do next. We got a conversation we need to have over here. We get this bright idea we want to implement. And it can be very hard for us to focus and concentrate so that we're active listeners. So the first thing that I want to remind you about is to schedule a time to actively listen. So if someone comes up to you and they've got a really important thing that they want to talk to you about, but you don't have time to listen because you're worried about getting to a meeting or you have something on your mind, it's better to say, you know what, this is something I can tell is very important to you. I've got to get to this meeting and I'm focused on the presentation that I have to deliver. I'm not going to be able to give you the attention that you deserve right now. Why don't we set up a time for us to talk later? And then either set it up then or direct them to have your to work with your assistant to get the meeting set up, whether it's phone call or a face-to-face -face meeting. Because when you schedule a time to listen, first of all, you commit to listening. You commit to the meeting and you are setting aside that time. And so it's important that when you do show up, that you are there in all respects. You're able to listen. You're able to settle your mind so that you can actively be a part of the conversation. So that's the first thing is to really make sure that you are positioning yourself to be a great active listener. So now in speaking to our team, we talked about the importance of eye contact. It's just as important for listening because when you're giving people the appropriate amount of eye contact, I'm not talking about staring them down, right? But when you give them the appropriate amount of eye contact, again, it shows that you're engaged. Now, you may need to turn around from time to time to think about some things, but make sure that you're not, you know, they, they're talking to you and you're looking around and you are just, you know, your eyes are saying, you know what, I'm here, but I ain't really here, right? Because that's insulting to another human being. Imagine how it feels when you're talking to your team and they're on their phones, they're on their smartphones, they're texting, they're looking around, and they're not paying attention to you. So make sure that you are given the appropriate eye contact. Also, just as important as your body language is in talking, it is also important in listening. So if you, if you are receptive, now I know for me, this is a default. I don't do it to shut people off. I just like holding my arms like this, but this is like the traditional universal message of I'm shutting down and not really listening, right? So just be mindful of that. Are you tensing up? Are you literally backing out of the conversation? Sometimes a way to show and to actively listen is to lean in. So I know me, I have, I believe, ADHD. You know, I literally, my mind is everywhere. So if I truly want to concentrate on somebody, I have to lean in and look them in their eyes. Otherwise, I will get distracted by the squirrels going by or whatever and unintentionally disengage from the conversation. So if you know that about yourself, make sure that you are doing what is going to maximize that conversation. Also, make sure that you give them feedback. Now, don't do the perfunctory, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, mm, yeah, okay, okay, okay. You know, don't be like a parrot, all right? Don't repeat everything they say and don't give the perfunctory remarks, but make sure that you are giving feedback. Okay, so if I hear you correctly, you need X, Y, and Z. 
did I did I hear you correctly that you said this? You know, make sure that you give that feedback. I want to make sure I understand. This is what you say you need. So this not only shows you're listening, but it does help with actually enabling you to remember the conversation and it helps you to register what they're saying in your own mind. So it serves a dual purpose. It shows you're listening and it helps you with retention. The next thing is be certain that you are a courteous listener. You know, you know, you, cause I know a lot of times when people are communicating, they playing double Dutch, right? They just can't wait to get in. The thing is you should listen to understand and not to respond. So, you know, you may have the perfect response prepared. You may have the perfect response ready, but if you don't allow the conversation to flow to the natural stopping point, you may be responding to something they're not even saying and you mess up the conversation. So be courteous. Don't interrupt if you can. And if you get excited, because I know sometimes I get excited, I want to interrupt. I just have to say, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm so excited. You go ahead and finish. I'll, I'll, I'll finish my, I'll come back with my thought when you're finished with yours. You know, so just be again, courteous. Um, just as important as it is to watch your body language, watch theirs. Are they shutting down? Are they tensing up? Are they relaxing such that they're receptive to what it is that you're saying? You know, make sure that you are listening with your eyes as much as you're listening with your ears. Also, it's important to make sure that you're having an apples and apples conversation and not an apples and orange conversation. So you may need to clarify things throughout and not assume that you understand what it is that they're saying. You know, if you are about to make a decision based on assumption before you do so, clarify. I want to make sure that I understand this correctly. Let me just play back to you what I've heard and where I think we are. Play it back to them. It gives them an opportunity to clarify because it could be that they miss said something or it could be that you've interpreted something incorrectly because we all bring our own experiences, ideas, and thoughts into a conversation, right? So that's going to influence what we hear and how we hear it. So it's important to do that clarification. Also, you want to make sure that you thank them for the conversation because it takes a lot of courage for people to come to their leader in a lot of instances to express themselves. And if you know that they have done something, even if you're not agreeing with what they say, you're not going to grant their request, or you need to give a response at a later time, you know, just thank them for expressing their thoughts to you. That goes a long way. And when you really need vital information from them, they will be happy to bring it to you because they won't be afraid, they won't be intimidated, and they will feel appreciated. So the thing too is as you're listening to what they say, listen for what the real issue is. Because sometimes they're talking to you about apples, but the real issue is the oranges that you never brought. Okay. So really think about that. Think through it. And sometimes you have to listen for what's not being said as much as you have to listen to what is being said, which is why being an active listener is so very important. And the final thing is to be clear on the expectations uh, for the resolution. Are you going to make a decision right then? If you can't, and if it's really something that you need to think about, then just tell them, you know what, you've given me a lot to think about. I really need to process this before I can give you an answer. And then it, tell them when you're going to give them an answer. And if you really don't know, just say, you know what, this is a lot. I've got a lot going on. I'm going to take some notes. I'm going to think about it. And then I'll get back to you later. And you really don't know when later is. Don't say I'm going to get back to you tomorrow when you know you ain't going to get back to them tomorrow because they're going to be mad as I don't know what. When they call you or email you tomorrow and you ignore them or you say, I don't have an answer for them. So just be clear. Just be honest. Be transparent. And but make sure, though, that you do have some type of resolution, whether the resolution is to agree with what they say and grant them their request to deny what they say or to defer it. Be clear about the resolution. People want to know they, they need closure. And as best as you can, and as is reasonable as you can, make sure that you have, that you communicate a resolution and that you're clear on your expectations of what the next steps are or are not.
because it's really important for you as the chief executive officer to be the chief communication officer, which means that you are just as good of a listener as you are a speaker. Because if all you do is talk to your team and you never listen to them, or when you do listen to them, you listen to them have uh, heartedly or without intent, then you're not going to get good information and you're going to disengage your team and they're never going to bring you the information that you truly need to be effective in achieving your desired outcomes. So I just thank you so much for joining me in part three. Look forward to connecting with you in part four of communicating like a CEO, how to engage and not enrage your team. And I encourage you to continue this series. And you know what? If you have any questions or you want to learn more, you can always go to www.drstephaniedbarnes.com to get more information. So thank you so much. Look forward to connecting with you in the next